Hello, Biotube. I'm Huey Holmes. And I'm Keith Myers. And this is the Bionicle Community Podcast. And we're going to be talking about anniversaries. You know. Oh yes, and there are quite a few of them, both in and outside of, well, just our space entirely. Let's go ahead and start with the one outside first. Gundam. It is 45 years old as of this year, and in only a few short years, I'm pretty sure it'll be 50. Yep. Hopefully the live-action Legendary movie will be done by then. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, they're um, doing, Legendary is doing great with Godzilla, the 70th anniversary, you know? Yeah. And honestly, it would make sense. As Legendary, they put a lot of detail into the giant stuff that they do. I think a lot of I people, I, actually... I don't get why people were upset with the, the pink spines for Godzilla. This isn't the first time that he's had, like, pink or purple spines, so. Yeah. I know, people get, people get upset about the wildest things. Um, but, but that's just the nature of fandom, you know? Yeah, it is what it is. I actually do have one of the Godzilla movies. I got it as a Christmas present sometime back. I don't know, we'll have to watch it at some point. Is it 98? No, it's one of the newer ones. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, my favorite Godzilla movie is Final Wars. Uh, and it's the funny movie because he just kills everybody, you know? <laughs> None of the monsters I can believe a fight. That. Except for one, obviously, but I don't want to spoil that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's see here. What else? Well, I guess Gundam Seed, I believe, had a major anniversary, which is why Gundam Seed Freedom was released. And while I do want to have us review that one, we have to wait till it comes to the U.S. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. There's no way around it. The At least, director, without breaking a few laws in the process. The director of Gundam Seed actually uh, directed the first few entries of the Yusha series, so that's something. Yes, and it seems you've built up quite a fan base for non-Gundam, well, non-Brave products, or just projects. I don't know why I said products there. Um, to be honest, uh, it really is... I know, I completely just lost the plot here. <laughs> whoops it daisy um, As far as anniversaries go, the Brave series, Yusha series, you know, um, Jay Decker, 30th anniversary. Um, Transformers 40th anniversary, of course, you know. Right. Um, Tell Me is celebrating its 100th anniversary. So, Hello Kitty, 50th anniversary, you know. Crazy how old a lot of the stuff is, you know, you take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to think about, and with... And it just occurred to me that that this channel has never, never celebrated a 2,000 sub special. I mean, yeah, it wasn't real. 2,000 doesn't sound like anything crazy. It's just a logical step from 1,000 and mm -hmm. but it's only a few 1, 000, thousand away so. from five. And within a few, and within about 500 or so subscribers, you'll be at 3,000, which is crazy to think about. I'll say that much. So even though it's a little late, I mean, it's good we're doing a 2,500 special or right now you yeah know. it's yeah and really a lot's happened since con since this channel hit a thousand um we tried to continue with the commute with the podcast for a while but neither of us just really had time so we just had to move on from it um i, I think we realized to be more smart about the stuff because there there really are some bad actors in the community you know Right. Yeah, and I also kind of burned out on Bionicle for a while there. I'm going to try and get back into it. There's a few animation projects I want to get off the ground. Um, the plan for 2025, obviously, is not going to be on YouTube. Uh, at least not in the way that... I mean, if it does go to YouTube, it won't be until it's done. Mm -hmm. Because this is just something I've always done with my animated projects... After a time frame, I tend to condense them into one big video so people don't have to go looking for them and have content wind up as lost media like it has in the past. Yeah. 
But, yeah, after that, I basically just focused on Home Arcade for a while, and that's starting to run its course now, as a lot of people have just come to the reality that, yeah, it doesn't look like Arcade 1-Up's gonna announce anything big. I think they're, if they're, if they don't announce anything till summer, that's one thing, but if they just don't announce anything, period, I think a lot of people are gonna start dropping out. So I guess you could I say mean, their Arcade are... went down. Uh, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> But otherwise, yeah, on the Constorm side of things, I mean, at least we hit 500 subscribers, so that's better than nothing. I really th I mean, yeah, as far as the content goes, I mean, you're actually Arcade 1-Up wasn't going to last forever. You know, you're actually what? monetized, which I'm not, so... Well, I wouldn't say I'm fully monetized. I do have memberships on my account, Well, I that's mean, uh, it. You're getting and I don't paid. necessarily advertise them either. You're getting paid through memberships, though. Yeah, but at the moment, I only have 22 bucks out of 100. Yeah, That's well. the minimum that YouTube would send me a check over, and unless other people pop in, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, it's better than nothing, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, you're getting yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. Know. Yeah, I mean, it's an, at least it's something. I'm just still trying to figure out where that first 18 bucks came from. But anyways, on to your channel. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, like we said, o over 200, uh, or sorry, 2,500 subs, so uh, that's something. And uh, was, yes, we're, we're chugging along at a slow pace, but I mean, it's, it's a good pace, to be honest. Yeah. Because here's the thing, you know, these channels, they grow big and everybody is all puffed up about it. And they is like, oh man, I'm going to throw... You know, the little people under the bus and all this and stuff. But, I mean, you look at it, and a slow burn is better because then you get people who are more dedicated, and your videos go out to those people, you know? Right. That, and uh, this is something that's been, a lot of people are starting to notice now, but a number of these bigger-name YouTubers who aren't ducking out or getting caught doing things they're not supposed to or just being grade A assholes to others mm -hmm. and result they basically get either called out on it to the point where they can't recover from it or they just straight up delete their channels like uh, one of the bigger arcade one-up YouTubers did earlier today apparently because of something some drama that had happened I guess Truthfully, if it were me in his position, I would have at least tried to back everything up before a major wipe. But can't really, but I can't really judge others because I really wasn't much better, I believe. Mhm. Mm yeah, I keep I keep the everything quite uh, orderly, to be honest. Even though, like, um, my channel is really chaotic. I I notice. Um, ironically. Yeah. Though, to be fair, some of that was my fault. My playlist management was all over the damn place. Uh, no, I think I think what really makes my channel chaotic is that uh, I keep reinventing what the channel is every every year, at least, you know? It seems, yeah. you know, um, like now the channel is very, there's very little Bionicle. There's still Bionicle content. Still Bionicle content. We're still a Bionicle channel to a degree. There's very little yeah. Bionicle content. It's more broad, right? Just robots of right. all kinds, right? So Yes, Gundam, Brave, and some of the more obscure ones that, like the one you released today. What was that? Uh, get a Robo. Yeah, Get a Robo. Sounds like Get a Rowboat. <laughs> <laughs> um... Though, you know what? You really ought to try Big O at some point. Try and do that instead, IO. That would be... I'd be very curious to see your take on it. Big O? Big O, yes. Ah. Mm. I think yeah. I'll, I'll save that <laughs> for I'll save that for later. Yeah. yeah. And if there's any stuttering, I apologize in advance. I've moved my workstation out to a different place than where my router is, so we're still playing around with the internet, trying to get it working as best as possible. I mean, this is this is about as goofy as it gets, anyways. Actually, you know, you think about it. I, I prefer things to be goofy and chaotic rather than um, clean, you know, because 
you want a world that's realistic and life is messy, you know? Right. But you can't that, be and too We're only overly... a couple of months. No, we're too not that far into it. Oh, so. uh, all right. Are you going to speak? Oh, no, you go first. I said it can't be too overly chaotic because then, you know, your channel is just going to die because people are going to be upset, like, wow, this is a completely different channel than what I subscribe to. And thankfully, we haven't done that. Thankfully, this is the exact same channel. It's just um, we're, we're, you know, expanding. Because the way I am with interests, I'm just not super interested in any one thing, you know? Um, right. So... Yeah, and, they're, and the only time the channel ever faced a massive removal of content was sometime in the past. I think something came up and I just kind of wiped everything out of frustration. Uh, I think the biggest removal of content was when I took down all the YouTube shorts. Um, well, those down, are, they're unlisted and I re-uploaded them as things. So it's like there wasn't a lot of content that just didn't get put right back up. But I mean, that's still a big chunk of the channel just, you know, gone and instant. It just and doesn't actually, exist right now. I accidentally took down my um, my videos twice. Uh, you remember really? that? I vaguely remember that. Um, it was just a, a few weeks ago. So actually, yeah, well, things have been top... a little uh, hectic on my end, to be fair. I oh, mean, but... pushing uh, mm -hmm. pushing away from Arcade One Up had some interesting consequences. But hey, at least we made it through the. At least we made it into the seven hundred. So there's that. <laughs> Out of the top five videos, you were the author of two of them. Oh, that's a good sign. Though I'm pretty sure those videos are ancient. If I if I think I know what they are, they're both from seven years ago. But that's fine. Yep. Bionicle Probably Master some Control, old like Final Battle, Umarak the Destroyer versus Galley. Uh huh. And uh, Shapeways yeah. unboxing. Funny how that kind of worked. Huh? Time. G2 was such a such a boon for the channel, and the only thing that was a bigger boon for the channel. Other than G two is bring back Bionicle, and I'm glad I'm glad we accomplished that, right? Oh um, yeah. Well, I wouldn't really say completely accomplished. I think what, when Lego realized, oh, there's still an audience for this, they were basically. I it looked to me like they were guilted into pushing it out. Yeah. I, I don't. They actually plan to do it. Yeah. I, it really seemed like because if you look at what we got, it's kind of like, all right, um, you know. It really seemed like we uh, kind of pressured them by, like, all right, guys, let's everybody go in droves to, um, you know, vote Bionicle, and we won, um, you know. So, of course, they did their, their shenanigans with Castle, and then they said, you know, whoever wins the second vote doesn't matter, you know. Uh, they literally came out and said the game was rigged from the start, you know. It's like, all right, all right, Lego, yeah. we got you. Yeah, sure. Really, though, Holding I just Rotten think the that state of Denmark, we just got to wait and see on a lot of things. I really, I really am hoping Bionicle, like, there is a few things where it was, like, eh on, you know, this year, Shinkalion, um, I knew it was going to be some parts warming S stuff, and I like, I really do like the product it's just it's not super impressive you know shinkalion changed the world i love it but not really my thing you know you ever feel that way about something yeah mostly it really depends and i feel but... like um i feel like bionicle 2025 is going to be i'm going to have the exact same reaction really excited up to it you know, saying, oh, you know, this is this is nice, and then not, like, just saying, all right, this is, like, low priority in terms of my collection, you know, it's just not not for me. Probably how I'm going to view it. I kind of have the opposite reaction with the uh, Boom Boonger Robo. It's, uh, you saw that, right? Um, that op White Optimus Prime. I thought this, um, is, this is so absurd, you know, but then I'm like, yeah, I kind of I kind of like how absurd it is. And the fact that it's so close um, to the classic Power, Power Master Optimus Prime, but it's Power Rangers is, uh, I mean, it just baffles, it boggles the mind, you know. 
I'm gonna wait. I'm yeah. gonna wait though because simply um, they're gonna have some big reveals in August. Sorry, not August. April. I'm gonna wait till April to order it. So anything I'm gonna buy from Japan, right? I can buy in one go because shipping from Japan is just not really. Uh, it's not a thing. Yeah, you you just have to spend top dollar to get anything from there. Uh. Um, it it really is not um, a simple matter at all. So. Everything okay? What? Sorry, you're so, you're cutting out again. I was so I was a little worried. Cutting out again? Yeah, on the audio level, but don't stress it. Just keep going because I'm sure you're recording on your end. Yeah. If anything, I, I'm probably the one stuttering. No, I didn't. Per- I haven't heard any stuttering from you. So. Oh, good. That's. Good to hear. But yeah, you you look at an item on um, Amazon Japan, right? Um, let's go there. You look at uh, an item. You know, it's a it's a ten dollar toy, right? Right. I'm not on Amazon Japan. I'm on Amazon.com. Wait, can you let me go to Amazon Japan? Price has dropped. I don't care. I do not care if the price has gone down to zero. Let me go to the right website. So let's let's look at this. A seventeen dollar toy, twenty one dollars shipping. Huh. So that's the reality of Amazon Japan. Yes. I mean, it's great that we actually well, have access to Japanese toys, right? That's a great thing. Well, to be but, fair, importing's never been cheap. Yeah, I know it, from experience, it is a monster to do. One thing I do like though forever. is that um, you don't have to go through like a proxy service or something with Amazon Japan. I think that's the real bonus there you know right is that you can ha- order everything and have it shipped from amazon japan right um you have buy and all these services and stuff and it's like that's too complicated i just want to buy the items the way i would on amazon and amazon yeah. japan is amazon so you can just do that you know yeah uh, yeah i see where you're coming from and you're currently four months now a member of my channel. So I paid you, what, $8? Mm, no, I only charge $1 for mine. It's ridiculous to go any higher than that, considering I barely keep it updated at I'm the moment. I'm pretty sure it's $2. No, yeah. well, let me check. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um... Let's go... Burn... Memberships. Hey, let me look at my bank statements. Um, a dollar thirty-nine. So, $1. but yeah, $1. yeah, that's the end result after uh, YouTube takes their cut of pocket change. So I think my uh, my bank statement says two eleven. So mm-hmm. that's how much I pay. Yeah, you can thank Google for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, it's gonna. I'm not. I'm not changing that price unless there's like a monumental shift in the. Like I'm talking overnight monumental, and that would be hilarious if that happened. I mean, it would be pretty over the top for sure. Yeah, and even then, the price wouldn't even go up that much. I think it maybe go up to three, maybe four dollars tops. I don't want to go any higher than that because I just don't feel the content's worth that much. At least, not right now, anyway. Yeah, you don't want to price yourself out of getting money, obviously. That's the thing. Like, how much is, how much am I worth, you know, at this point in time? So, I think $2 is a pretty good price. Well, it's two eleven, obviously, but, you know. I think it, would, it varies. Um, I think they have much higher taxes in California, so... For Californian viewers, it would be a lot more... Right. But, you know, I don't live in California. Okay. I just m- modified my channel a bit. Okay, let's go change video. So, there's a six, a six cent sales tax. I just did let's the do the test footage head. for people who haven't subscribed. What do you think of they get them getting rid of the channel, channel, sorry, channel um, thing? Uh, what channel thing? The channels guide, like the channel page on the channels. 
You know how you go to channels mm. and there used to be a channel page? They got rid of that. Oh, right. No, no, no. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I think they got rid of that because now you can just put it as a sectional piece on your front page if you wanted to. Well, I know I do that well, sometimes. The thing is, you could always do that. I think that's why, because they said, why would we, like, all, all you're doing is duplicating it to another page, right? Right. So. I had 25 before you buy videos overall, not counting ones that have been taken down and placed on the... Not counting the unofficial ones or the outdated ones. So right now I'm promoting <laughs> the Bible Channel, Dylan, then you, then Dandy. Wow. Well, I think I might yeah, just make this have, one shelf, okay. though, because the way it's four shelves, I get that people can scroll down, but nobody will. Um, not that anybody actually visits the home pages of channels, um, but you know. Um, yeah, it really depends. It, it just genuinely depends on who you talk to. <sighs> I think, um, you know, it, just, I, it does depend, I guess, but uh, some people more than others. Yeah, on mine, I have a couple of family members and you and a friend of mine from high school, and that's about it. Neither of my family members actually do any kind of YouTube content, by the way. Well, that's good. Uh, so, I don't know why I still have this section active. I just sort of do. But yeah, you're the most subscribed out of the entire section, obviously. Well, you know, what, if you think about it, my success is not really that much. Because you divide, let's divide 25 by 15, right? Mm-hmm. So... It's 166 subs per year. Yeah. That really isn't as much as it seems. Uh, no, not... but I still think that you've already done quite a bit of work as it is. Like, I'm pretty sure your 360 spins have been probably the most retentive. I mean, you probably do more than... <laughs> you probably do more content than me by a wide margin. Mm -hmm. Then again, my content is all over the place because I'm constantly waiting on somebody to come through with something or announce something or anything of that sort. Well, I used to do daily content. Then, you know, I got um, in quite a situation. Now I'm out of that situation. So, you know, I can do daily yeah. content again. Yeah. And considering that my channel's now on a virtually weekly basis, unless something terrible happens. I think that things are gonna be very strange from here on in. I mean, I do have this nifty for you, this nifty for you segment for on the channel. Yeah, that's, and that's nice to have. That's something they borrowed from TikTok, actually. Well, I think the concept's been around longer than TikTok, but. I think maybe Vine, potentially. Yeah. But I'm not 100% on that. Well, they added it because they're, you know... Oh, you can you can adjust for you to, like, block certain segments of your thing. Right. So. Well, I'm not that... Well, in terms of the channel's legacy, I don't have anything I'm that worried about mm -hmm. in terms of how dated it might be, as the majority of it is speculative anyway. Yeah. However... It just really depends. I mean, there are playlists that are pretty outdated on here that I don't know why I still have them. Pretty sure the March of Animation, I don't know why I have that anymore. And the completed long uh, form... To be honest, I like, I like keeping, like, my, um... um oh, my. Do you know how many videos it says are in my, um, videos tray? 666. How many? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's a little funny. Jeez, that's that's a little spooky, ain't it? Yeah, just a little. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of things come and go from both our communities, but yeah, I think between the two of us, I'd say you've had more improvement. I'm still trying to hammer down a content piece that I feel is going to last for a long time. And I'm really... I'm currently debating how... If Game Time News manages to actually hit 100 videos, what the thumbnail is going to have to look like. You know, because once we get episodes, the number scheme is going to be way too big. Yeah, I can see that. 
You notice um, the um, I think the only series I really number is the yeah the bio um, the Bionicle Community podcast. I almost said um, the yeah. old name of it, uh, of course. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. You've had that you had that name for an insanely long time, so it's honestly muscle memory at this point. It yeah, just feels sad to completely let it go. It, it, you know? it, it's sad that they stole it from me. Yeah, that's life. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised I haven't found somebody yet who's tried to borrow my channel name. Or maybe if they did borrow it, I blocked them out or something. I honestly um, don't know. Well, given when you look up Constorm, only you come up. I mean, I think you can like actually get... You should probably get a um, trademark on that. Yeah, I am debating that, but if I do... It probably is not going to be until after the wedding. There's just because a trademark filing is usually about a hundred bucks. Yeah, and that's, that's like, oof, <laughs> that is a monster and a half to do because you have to keep that up by the year. Well, I think it's every ten years or so. Every ten years, okay. So a hundred for ten years is actually a bargain, I think. Then, but yeah, there's some. Um, pretty ancient videos that are still knocking around after all these years that the KMA shutdown video from six years ago was still I'm still seeing on YouTube and other than that yeah it looks like looks like as far as the channel itself is concerned it's just naming and passing and that's about it mm-hmm uh, yeah, I don't. I still don't know why I chose the name that I did. I don't think I'll ever know either. Oh, it just I sort of came up one day. That reminds me of that one time, ContuTube. ContuTube. Oh right, yes, the Patreon. Oh man, yeah. I had. I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna be honest. I basically closed off that. I feel like the Patreon and the membership would mm -hmm. basically be in basically be against each other like yeah. i just don't see how it would actually because work. then you're then you're pulled into making content for two different groups of people that uh, yeah you know and the expenses and all that yeah and youtube isn't exactly the most forthcoming i might add unfortunately their website is prone to deliberate slow down as of late and you can probably guess how annoying that gets when i'm trying to do something that's why i have to constantly flip over to the brave browser so i can mitigate the slowdown because despite having premium they still docked me for having an ad blocker just installed uh. in general and google better knock that off or they're gonna get in trouble one of these days because technically they're not supposed to be peeking around at people's browsers I, I've never used an ad block. Um, to be honest, I don't mind the ads. Yeah, I do. It honestly makes the website a lot harder to use. Especially when stuff pops up out of nowhere. I guess, um, you know, there are certain ads that I just block because they're annoying, but, like, it's just, I just, I see that it's part of, like, the, um, I understand it's part of the thing, like, people will need to get paid. And this is what, you know, how people get paid, so... That's how I view things, you know? Right. I know I know that seems a little Mr. Rogers-esque, but I mean... It just is what it is, you know? Yeah. At the moment, it's really hard to say what the future holds for either of our channels. I mean, hell, maybe I will get lucky and Constorm will hit 1,000 this year, but... Being realistic, we only bet just barely crossed over into 700, and that's after... And we only just now, today, hit 706, and that's after four weeks into the year. So, it's a bit of a... Uh, so, it's hey, kind of... I mean, you never know. I mean, think of that, wow. uh, think of how the channel became so big, um, oh. so fast. It was... Let's do it. Um, it was that Bring Back Bionicle thing. We just got on that current... Um, you know, as, as soon as we discovered that, we got on that current, and... Uh, we uplifted up a lot of other channels as well, for better or worse. 
Right, yes. And you subscribing to everybody also helped. Yeah. Um, you yeah. Know, that, I don't recall was... anybody actually making a big stink about that. Now that it was a sub for sub thing, um, in the end it kind of just left my channel with a whole bunch of subscriptions to dead channels. Um, I actually yeah. ended up making a video about that. Um, yeah, yeah the just, dead um, biotube theory. There's just so many, so many dead biotube channels. And a lot of people, it's sad that, um, I mean, I get why he did it, um, because, you know, it's when you're, what, 40 years old, Bionicle, or sorry, 30 years old, Bionicle isn't as entertaining as it used to be. Uh, but it's sad mm -hmm. Legomation left right before Bionicle came back. You know? It was, uh, it was just very, very odd timing, you know? I'd have to say of the OG Biotubers, uh, Legomation Studios, uh, he's top tier. Yeah. Well... I was kind of on the fence about him when I first discovered him back in the day. And I don't know, it might have just been that style of content. There's just something that feels a little off when you can tell somebody is forcefully acting. Mm -hmm. It just comes off as a little hard to me. His, his reviews... But I think, he's, I think he does pretty well nowadays, though. Yeah. It's like, though, as you said, Biotalk hasn't had a real entry in a couple of years now since the start of the Cataclysm collab. And for the most part, I, I'm pretty sure that he's probably just doing a job. And sometimes these jobs do take a couple of years to do, especially in the film industry. It's just the way it is. Well, he's, uh, he's living his life. Apparently he did do a live stream when the, um, when the um, gift with purchase came out. Really? Never noticed. Yeah. Oh, um, well, that's that something. Stream is now private, so that's also unfortunate. <sighs> well, in the gift with purchase situation, I feel, I feel we handled that pretty well, especially for how it happened. I mean, you were very skeptical, which was understandable. Like, brick, brick-based Bionicle was the last thing I think anybody expected. But I think what what really made it funny is. Uh... A lot of my like detractors would like make up stuff that I said that I didn't say. Um, like, oh, you said you no, know, there was no gift with purchase, and it's like no. Um, I just said I was, I didn't think it was that um, because we had seen that that leak had been floating around for a long time, you know, like a year. So, like. Um, it just seemed like there was a lot of incompetence around the project. The fact that when it finally came out, they misspelled Greg's name. Um, yeah, so I don't blame your skepticism. Like, for a professional product, that is rather unusual, to say the least. Yeah. Like, what is but yeah, this definitely feels like a last-minute thing. Mm -hmm. Just purely on that along. Like, if this project had the development that they claimed it did, there's no reason that any typos should have been on the packaging. Yeah, especially especially the Bionicle guy himself having his name misspelled, you know. Yeah, yeah it it was it was really just uh, it was really something, I guess. I like how I like how um, when F Faber got a hold of it, he just replaced the um, head with um, a Bionicle head. Was, yeah, yeah, that was pretty funny. That was probably the... I think if, if they just made new masks, I think nobody would care if, if it was system or not, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Um, cause you think about it, you know, they're just going to take the parts and use them in their mocks anyways, right? What do people right. want? They want new masks. And these things, you know, the tiles aren't masks. Um, that's kind of the only problem people really had with it. For me, it was also that, you know, it wasn't... The Technic build, you know, and it sucks because we had RSM and that was just so good, you know, right? Um, and yeah, have... I think they that I feel like that was a good proof of concept about what could have happened, yeah, it, but unfortunately, that was not what we got. And they had that Takanuba that was built like pretty much the same as RSM and even had a function, but uh, you know, they thought they thought about the price and you know, they want to do more of them so. It really just was, you know, what we we're going to do, what we could do at that price point, point. and that's the thing. They raised the uh, the price point, 
on the second release of the gift with purchase. It went from mm -hmm. 100 to what was it? 200 something. I don't know for sure, but I did, but I don't recall hearing about the price hike. I had already had it for a long enough time by then that yeah. it wasn't a problem. But yeah, if they if they if Lego was seriously going to try and seriously do 2 250 for a gift with purchase then no, what I don't was, think it'd be a bright idea to support though, that. though, for the gift with purchase, and, you know, everybody was like, oh, this is going to be a valuable thing that people could treasure and so on, immediately. Um, immediately they had it up on, um, like, the masks. They had them up on Pick a Brick. So. Brick Link? Not Brick Link, Pick a Brick. Oh, never heard of that. You know, where you buy Lego parts from Lego at the Lego store? Hmm. Yeah, not a, I'm not familiar with that one. I don't really focus on Lego's direct offerings. Oh, uh, sorry. But yeah, basically yeah. you can get you could just buy the masks if you wanted to. That was the thing. Which I mean really makes you think, you know, like wow, they they did everything they could to remove as much value from the set as possible. So really it's just the box at that, that point, right? Right. And the box was all right. I thought they did a pretty good job with it, given what they had on hand. It, it seemed a little empty to me. There's a lot of, like, um, neutral space. Uh, but that's typical for Lego boxes. They just aren't as cool as they used to be. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And as far as the future goes, I honestly don't know for sure what's going to happen yet. I feel like the... I feel like Constorm's future is in news at the moment. If only just out of pure necessity. Because it doesn't sound like doesn't look like Arcade One Up's gonna do anything, so it's better just to stay focused and just get done somehow. For me it's all about learning uh learning patience, because when you're impatient that's when you screw up, you know. Right. Oh, I've learned that. I've learned that particular lesson more than a couple of times already. Yeah. Um. So when when bringing back the three sixty spins, uh, Get a Robo was obviously the first place that I. Um. It wasn't ri originally the first. I was gonna do Swyx Family first, but then I thought about it and Get a Robo definitely was the first place to start because that video was already. And I used a lot of the original audio from that video. Um, of course, I modified it because it, I don't want to release the same video twice, obviously, right? So um, I added a lot more commentary um, than what it had. But that one, I was already going into the commentary, and I think that's what a lot of my old videos lack. Because not only you have the two second spins, but immediately it goes on to another thing, you know? And I think yeah. people, people enjoy the commentary, so I think the new or second format is perfect for that. So for um for Lunar New Year um we had Kit Kat bars, you know. Yeah. I've been looking through my TikTok and it's really funny. Mhm. Mm Things are very strange when it comes to this platform because my because my content always seems to top out around 200 or in extremely rare cases it does manage to break a thousand it's weird i feel like there's some weird algorithm that just cuts off my views entirely once i hit a certain point yeah it's weird it's it's funny because um back when i had my shorts um of course i took them all down but back when i had my shorts up i wonder if i could short um sort my shorts here uh, views, the shorts. Go. Let's let's cut everything that is under 1k. And wow, I had a lot of shorts over 1k. So my biggest short, this one here, Bionicle Prototype AR, ARG. I know that was a big controversy. That was 12k. Um, 11k for uh, the Baby Yoda torture. 18 for Tohunga as Abmatoran. Yeah, it's funny, all these videos get like 200 views a piece, and somehow not a single person actually put a like on them. It's weird. It's yeah, a little sketch to me. Likes, I feel like somebody screwed the, the thing. thing on YouTube, I tell you. 
there's nothing weird. And on TikTok, it seems. Oh, you're, you're talking about TikTok as well? Yeah. Yeah. It, they're very strange on both platforms is what we're trying to get at here. It's very confusing the, sometimes. I, I can't believe there. this one YouTube short got 730 likes. That's, a, that's amazing. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, what? YouTube is the most confusing thing on the internet to me. It's this, just weird. Can't this, uh, stand how out of control it is post. sometimes. This gamer edition video got four forty six thousand um, views, forty six thousand eight hundred thirty view one view. It got to two thousand six hundred fifty seven likes. So, I guess that that really um, you know there's a there was a lot to, going into this channel to make it appeal to Transformers fans. I kind of don't want to be just. Um, I was thinking about in the long run, right? Let's say Bionicle G3 is a big, huge bomb. Let's say it bombs bigger than G2 ever did. Let's say it was the biggest possible. Let's say it was the biggest possible bomb in the history of bombs, right? Right. That would ki- that would probably kill the Bionicle community, I think. On YouTube, at least, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it'd definitely hit like a truck if that were to occur. But we'd really have to understand how would bio- how would Gen three bomb? Like, would they have to screw up the story? Would they have to screw up the sets? Would they just decide to only do one wave of it and then call it quits? Like, what would we really consider a bomb in this situation? Um, I think I think um, any of the three, to be honest. Well, if they did one wave, um, I think. People would be upset. Some people might say, oh, all right, I'm done with this. I think it wouldn't be that bad if they were just open about it and it's like, oh, we're just going to do this one, right? Yeah, we're just going to do one wave and call it good. Yeah, that would be one thing. But if they're but they're like, oh, man, we're going to do... If they overpromise like they did with G2 and way under-deliver, I think that's what's going to be... That's, that's what the bomb is, right? Yeah. I think the thing that really screwed up Gen 2 was there was no pacing. That's pretty obvious. 2015 was pretty rapid fire. And 2016 was clearly not to, not meant to have gone the way it did. It just seems to me like LEGO just threw something out there with no care at all or effort. I just realized I have you on like the loudest setting. So every time you talk, you're like twice as loud as I am. Oh, wow. <laughs> Now I want, now I really, now that makes me curious about that one Biomedia interview. Maybe I could have lowered that guy's volume and not killed my ears in the process. All right, now now you're fixed. Um, okay, yeah, that's, good. that's unfortunate, but I guess people are going to say, why is he yelling? Why am I so loud? <laughs> oh, well, I had a different microphone when I first started doing these types of videos, but... These days, I'm on a blue snowball mic, so things are a little different nowadays. But yeah, I still prefer to use Audacity to clean things up. I think this, uh, it's not quite a filler episode, but it is an episode where we're just kind of thinking out loud. Where we're just kind of talking whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's like, that can be fun well, sometimes, you know? Yeah, it's fun just to sit back and just relax for a little bit and... Think about everything that's actually got us to this point. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of surreal to think. Maybe, yeah, maybe somehow Constorm does hit 1,000 this year. That'd be pretty awesome. However, because of how split the channel is, like, considering the main focus is, like, news content until Arcade 1-Up does something, then it'll go to Arcade 1-Up content for a while, and then we'll reboot back into news content for the rest of the year because Arcade 1-Up went radio silent. Mm-hmm. It just seems like the channel really needs to find a footing before anything until people really can settle on the channel. Well, at least you have a general theme for your channel, which is games, and the general theme of my channel is robots. Even though robots is quite a broad thing, you know? Well, yeah, it's broad, but you know what you're doing. You've mm-hmm. looked into quite a few anime over the years, and I'm sure if you were willing to try, I think you could probably do stuff like Big O or maybe Metal Gear. I would have no idea how you would do that with the Breeze Mock, but a Metal Gear would be a very fascinating challenge for you, I'm certain. I actually did make one Metal Gear um, 
One Metal Gear really? mock. Huh. What, what mock was, went, um, and which Metal Gear would that have been? Um. Well, that's that's the that's the thing, isn't it? No, you don't remember. Um. Well, you know. Let me show you. Because when you dun, see dun, this, dun. when you see this, you'll really say, "Wow." Wow. Wow. Jeez, <laughs> um, uh, where was that? Metal Gear is a video game, right? Yes. Yeah, you know, it's really funny. Christian Faber has been showing off a lot of old artwork for Hero Factory as of late. I know he just does this just to do it, but it's nice to see. It does kind of freak people out a little bit, like, oh, oh, Hero Factory's coming back. Like, no, it isn't. He's just doing this to do it. Don't, don't get any ideas. Uh, remember when we jumped on that uh, so-called Bionicle leak, and it wasn't? Yeah. yeah. It was pretty unfortunate. But we all screw up at some point, right? Yeah. And I think the, the thing about Vapor's thing is it did eventually... We did eventually get it... um, the Bionicle G3, except it's coming, you know... Well, I guess it's in installments. 2022, 2023, and now 2025 is actually what it's... it's 2025 is going to be the actual big event, right? Right. So yeah, Senator Armstrong is the only Metal Gear mock that I've made so far. Yeah, but he's not an actual Metal Gear. He's just a guy souped up on Nano Machine steroids. Nano Machine, son. Yeah, basically. I, I love that he said, um, "Make America Great Again." This is before Trump, even. Uh, yeah, long before Trump, I think. It's it's um, hilarious. This was during the Obama administration, I believe. Yeah, it, it's hilarious. But at least that was when Metal Gear Rising Revengeance released, and honestly, I think they probably could do a sequel to it. I'm pretty sure they can. It's just, it would be, because I believe they had the people who developed the Bayonetta series mm -hmm. make that game, and it worked out pretty well. And yeah, sure, the story is utter nonsense, but that's the whole fun of it. Like, of course it's utter nonsense. You are literally a ninja in, like, the 20, 21st century, swinging around with a high-frequency blade, suplexing Metal Gears and tossing them into the air. Of course it's completely ridiculous. Yeah, none of it makes any sense, does it? And then... Uh, no, but that's the fun. Honestly, and, there were some pretty messed up moments in the actual Metal Gear series, too. And also some meta moments. I think the opening of Metal Gear Solid 4 had David Hayter actually appear live action for a scene for an interview. Wow. And that was, I think, the most meta thing that I saw of Metal Gear at the time. And then a, few, and then a little time later, I found out Metal Gear 2 was a thing. The memes, Jack. Memes. <laughs> what did what did that guy say? Memes are the um something of the soul. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see here. The DNA of the soul. That's yeah. what it was. That's hilarious. Um, I I guess they just like I guess they read uh read um that book by Dawkins and like all right we're gonna make a video game based on this. Yeah, the, I'm think you know. If you can't do the actual Metal Gears, I feel like the villains from Rising are probably doable to you. You could probably yeah. pull it off. Well, I could do. I could do yeah. both. You know, I could do both. So. Yeah. Well, I think you should try and at least do Monsoon. His color scheme is really simple: black and red, and a little bit of white, and that's about it. Yeah, he seems doable. Yeah, and his whole gimmick is that he splits up anyway, so he is basically a Bionicle. They predicted Bionicle G2. Eh, I wouldn't... No, I wouldn't really stretch that. MG Rising, I think, came out when Bionicle Gen 1 was still going. Or, like, right after. Let's see. When did Metal Gear Rising release? Pretty sure... Is it, uh, Feb... Uh, 2013. So, yeah, it was, so. like, a little... So, it was, like, right before Gen 2. I mean, probably before that's Gen really 2 started development. Yeah, funny how that works. But yeah, I think the first time I ever saw Metal Gear Rising was coming back from a winter camp up at Camp Bradley before it fell into the hands of a different tr 
but before it fell into the hands of a different council, as I was in Boy Scouts for a time, and honestly, I wasn't that impressed with it. I felt like, it just felt like it took forever to get anything done, and any time we'd go on a camping trip, everybody would always screw around. Honestly, I thought about saying something about it, but <sighs> what are the odds that people would listen, right? Yeah, people, people are people, yeah. Yeah. But everybody seems to have found their way at some point, so nothing, so it's not that big of an issue. It's just a little odd. It is what it is. But anyways, I don't know what else we can really talk about. That wouldn't be a spoiler for the upcoming weeks. I mean, I did, I have, under, I have figured out a new, I have, I did say earlier that I was thinking about a new version of Risen Darkness that's, where with the entire story being about 15 episodes in general. Like, I feel like that might be a little... I know that might not be enough time, but with how I tell stories at this point, and with how much of the plot's already figured out, I don't know. It's... I think I've pretty much come to an understanding about what the major plot points are and how to get moving on them. But that's about it. And because it's 15 episodes, I'm not going to bother releasing it onto YouTube. This doesn't seem appropriate. I mean, when it's done, I might drop it on YouTube just for funsies, but I don't know. <laughs> that really, um, yeah, I really need to start getting back into doing, especially since the 15th anniversary of the channel, or not the channel, but of the brand, I guess. Um, even though we've changed the name of the brand a dozen times since then. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've been on YouTube since 2009 overall. December 1st, like, 2009 overall, yeah. Yeah, it's been... You've been here for damn near everything. Like, 2009, I think I was probably in grade school at that time. Not even middle school. I probably was in, like, fourth or fifth grade at that point. It has been... It was, a. Uh, and I think we were, I don't want to say we were still using Windows XP at that point. I, but I think we have, I think we weren't, I don't know, it's been way too long. But it wouldn't be that out of, it wouldn't have been out of place. Our school district here is very strange when it comes to adopting new versions of Windows. Sometimes they can stay on an operating system for an ungodly length of time. And sometimes they can just switch OS's halfway through the year. Yeah, and that was a monster to deal with. When that was a monster to have to deal with in high school, because I think we went from Windows eight point one to ten. I think only in the span of a couple of months. Wow. That was a whole thing into it. Pretty much was the the whole story between Windows eight point one and ten, because with Windows eight, they was really a didn't update. want you. They didn't want you to stay on Windows eight. You know. Yeah, well, um, so, Windows 8 felt like an unfinished concept to a lot of people, kind of like Vista. It kind of it kind of became finished when they got to Windows 10, to be honest. Yeah. And then Windows 11 just decided to just throw a, for, a wrench in that, yeah. Well, Windows 11 was never even initially meant to happen. Uh, the original plan for Windows 11 was to be a pseudo-tablet OS called Windows 10X. Yeah. However, when their dual-tablet system fell through, what they ultimately decided on was to rework it into a just a more graphically unique version of Windows that would later become Windows 11 in 2021. I was long out of the Insider program by then, so I never even saw it coming, but yeah, they pretty much threw their entire plan to have Windows 10 be their operating system as a service out of the park. Because mm. they got way too ambitious and had no idea what they were actually going to do. Yeah, that was a whole that was a whole time period. Of, I'll tell you, really is something, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. OSs in general are just something. And right now, as far as that goes, I was going to I was going to try and ha keep Project Lapis around to test up to Windows twelve. But unfortunately, due to USB incompatibility issues, 
I basically have to design a new computer from what essentially amounts to scratch. And not that's not really going to be difficult. I think the build in question that I'm looking at right now is going to be 1400 overall. So as long as I'm quick on my feet, I should hopefully be able to pay it off in a reasonable enough time to be ready when Windows 12 launches. Because I'm pretty sure by the time that OS comes out in 2025, which is the rumored announcement period, there's more than likely going to be that as an option. But, I don't know. I've had this computer for quite a while already. I built it in 2018, and I gotta say, it lasted, it's lasted, I'll say that much, it has lasted quite a while for a open-air system that I kind of put together on the fly. I don't think my initial plan even was AMD. It was going to be Intel, but I screwed up the processor or the motherboard. I think it was the motherboard. So I had to switch chipsets about halfway through. And it... Yeah, thank goodness the stimulus checks were a thing at that point. Yeah. I know they were made entirely because of people being displaced financially, but in my case, it actually kind of worked itself out. I mean, it, it really was just a very strange, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, very. Well, as far as everything else goes, I guess it's just hard to say right now. Things are all over the place, and... And this entire video has been all over the place. I think we've covered literally everything. The everything entire, under the sun. The entire content of the universe is in this one video. <laughs> we've Yeah, we've covered basically everything we've ever discussed in, between our two channels. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately, I think ultimately, um, just more... Um, more of the same, and I think more experiment. You know, more we're gonna move forward while keeping ourselves still us, right? Right. Yeah, and it's gonna be important for us to stay us, especially since I'll be getting married in only five hundred days. Well, if, well, five hundred days starting in about let's see, fifty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine minutes. I'll be hitting the 500 days till mark. Holy crap. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty that was, amazing. That 100 days went by quick. <laughs> 100 And not days. a single thing is actually... Okay, no, that's not true. I guess a little bit has gotten done. I have a couch and a coffee table now, so... Yeah, there's that. That's good. Yeah, I mean... As far as that goes, I'm pretty sure that's all set. But I still have the rest of the house to sort out, so... Eh. But we still got 500 days. It's not going to be terrible, right? Uh, Possibly. <laughs> uh, uh, I just hope I get some comments on my videos soon. I disabled comments in the first place because we had a couple of trolls causing problems on my first channel back in high school. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll consider re-enabling comments if people can behave. That that really reminds me. Uh, I had some trolls there saying, "Oh man, people, you know, people just made this so so." Up. It was they're questioning whether one thing was inspired by the other, and they said, "No, oh, people just made that up." When it was the same guy, the same exact guy, who had designed both toys, and it's like, I just don't have time for this, so I just blocked them. You know. Right. I understand where you're coming from. Not to, yeah, and we've seen some pretty interesting viewing locations for content. I think over on uh, BitView, or no, not BitView, Vidly, mm -hmm. uh, back when I was still actively maintaining that channel, it was very strange. Uh, I don't know who the hell was down there watching my content, but I had a viewer all the way from Antarctica. Like... <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> they might have There's been not using... That many I'm pretty sure they'd be using a VPN. Yeah, a v I think that's probably the most likely case. But could you imagine? Like, out of everywhere that I've seen views from, that would be the last place I expected. Yeah. In general. Really, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, as far as that, that's all concerned, that's something. That's very much something. I don't know if that's going to happen again. But yeah, I don't blame people for using stuff like VPNs on websites like Vidly. They aren't exactly the uh, most sanitized. I'm pretty sure I found the Funky Town Gore video once. And honestly, after really, after actually watching it, it was blurry as hell. I couldn't see a thing. <laughs> it really wasn't that bad. Or maybe I just desensitized myself to the point where I probably might need a therapist. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Good. Keep it that way. Yeah, as far as everything else goes, I think they probably just cut those videos off. Somehow. But if I really felt like it, I could probably throw my latest Game Time news videos on here just for funsies and see if they get any views or any kind of traction at all. Mm hmm <sighs> But there's still no shortage of Nazis on here, literally. Yeah. <sighs> but where do you go when YouTube bans you, right? True, yeah. <sighs> well, that is the fate of most of these YouTube clones, is eventually they're going to be prone to this kind of thing. I mean... They're just <laughs> going to be prone to the more seedy content out there on the internet. What else? I mean, you think of Daily Motion, you know, the French YouTube, and it just... Ah, yes. I did upload some stuff there, too. But, for the life of me, I just don't use it. it I mean, it's, why would you I use it? Don't. I mean, I... It, it pretty much is just a... Well, um... it's kind of in a weird spot, like... There's no following on it at all. Um, I can't see anything. And they, they while I had um, views, the view counter, they disabled it because it was so low. Because it was bugged. What? It, because it was bugged. No, the view counter was just so low. They just decided to disable views to pretend there's huh. more people on the website than there actually are. Uh huh. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Daily Motion is probably one of the few surviving places for my very old content. Like, we're talking nine years old, that kind of content. That reminds like nine years me. in the past. So the, these bronies, they have oh this little, like, um, place where they pirate the content, right? And they had posted Daily Motion links. In the Daily Motion links, I posted a YouTube video link. And the really? guy flipped out, and everybody else is like, "Bro, come on, he's just helping us." Like, can we, yeah, like, can we try and come to an understanding about this? Like, sheesh. But I guess, I guess Although, he really just wanted to promote. Updated, so he wanted to promote his stuff. channel, you know, on Daily Motion. Right. That's why he did it. And the fact that I was gonna give people an opportunity to not use his service. To promote his channel, um, or to not promote his channel, you know, uh, made him really upset. Um, which really showed us: is, is are you really trying to provide a service for people, or are you just, um, you know, trying to steal stuff? And that's, I mean, I I kind of exposed him in that sense, you know. But that's the thing, you know. Um, Bronies kind of was like Elsa Gate before Elsa Gate, you know. They kind of made some pretty terrible content. It's not an indictment of all bronies, but I'm just saying there were bronies who did that, you know? Yeah, it's pretty disgusting stuff. Yeah. Uh, the only the only Elsa Gate channel I really liked was uh, Toys in Japan, because that guy, you, you could tell, you know, he was just having a ball. Um, PewDiePie, you know, versus Hitler. That's, um, I mean, o only a pure genius could think of something that... Um, Funny and offensive, to be honest. Um, yeah, he was he was basically just coasting on hate. People hate watching him, you know? And then trolls just putting in different inputs, you know? Some people think it was an early AI experiment, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't, you know? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but, you know, I guess props to Toys in Japan for being the biggest troll on YouTube before he was... You know, destroyed, obliterated for being an Elsa Gate channel. Yeah, I think I have been really experimenting with all sorts of video platforms as of late. So you like to experiment with video platforms. I like to experiment with video formats. Funny. Yeah, well, 
honestly, the 4x3 thing, we'll just have to see how long it lasts. This could really go mul this could go many directions right now. You know, the format would be interesting, uh, VR. VR? Uh, it's something, but VR is one of those weird formats to me. It's just weird. Yeah. I don't know if... I, I feel like that's more on you. I feel like that's more your thing than mm -hmm. mine, but I don't know. Maybe if I were doing, like, certain... If I had to use it for promotional purposes, it would be a different story. But yeah, it's kind of weird. It just is. Yeah. Well, I think we've covered everything under the sun, and more so. Um, yeah, pretty much covered everything under the sun. Yeah, virtually no views at all on the daily motion side of things. Then again, it is a it is a understandably forgotten channel. Like, I just have not well, it's a, tried a forgotten to do platform. anything on here in years. I just told you there was no view counter anymore. I know, I know. Um, but mm, yeah, um, I think we should probably get wrapped up because we're in over an hour now. So yeah, okay. Well, um, thank you for watching. I'm Huey Holmes. And I'm Keith Myers. And we'll see you all next time, where I hope we'll actually be covering the Cataclysm collab. Yeah. And, or, or rather, at least the first part of it, because these are like two hours apiece. Good lord, guys. Jeez, Louise. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah. Links below.